Hello, it's Mitten, and sorry I haven't posted in a while, been kind of busy. One of the episodes, my dad forgot to plug the mic in properly, and so I had to voice it over whatever that's called, and I didn't really like doing that, so we never got around to finishing it. But today, I'm posting. It's gonna be great. And today, we're going to be making something very important. Pizza, because I mean, who doesn't like pizza, right? Most people know how to make pizza, it's pretty simple. You have the base, stick some toppings over the top, cook it, and you're done, it's great. But the secret to making a good pizza is making your own dough, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. So, what you'll need is an apron, this can get quite messy, a big working space, and you need to preheat the oven to pretty much as hot as it goes. So that's about 250 degrees Celsius. Anyway, for the ingredients, you'll need two teaspoons of dried yeast, quarter cup of warm water, three cups of flour, another one and a quarter cup of warm water, and four tablespoons of olive oil. You will also need two pinches of sugar, two pinches of salt, and some flour to put on your working surface so you can knead the dough. We're going to activate the yeast first. We're going to pour the water into the yeast and then add two pinches of sugar. And we add the sugar because the yeast is alive and it eats the sugar and then it froths up and then that, that's the yeast that's activated. Good to make dough then. <laughs> and now you put this in a warm place. So I'm gonna put it over here because it's about like 26 degrees today in Auckland, it's pretty hot, so there's fine. And make sure you wash your hands really thoroughly because we're actually going to be like touching the ingredients. First, we're going to sift the flour. So just make a well, kind of go to the bottom of the bowl a bit. So now you're going to add the warm water and olive oil into your well. Oops, that didn't really. And yeah, it's fine. Olive oil. And you want to add the yeast, which as you can see has frothed up. It's really, ugh, looks gross. Okay, and now you want to mix it up with a spoon or spatula. Probably gonna smell bad for a while. Ooh. It's gonna look pretty flowery for a while, but eventually it'll get there. And when it starts sticking to itself, not to the bowl much anymore, you're ready to get your hands in it. Okay, I think that's good. Now for the fun part. You've gotta make sure your hands are nice and covered in flour so the thing doesn't stick to you. Dough, move it aside. Flour on your working surface. Get it out, plonk, and we'll start kneading it. Oh, it's quite sticky and feels like. You want to make sure it doesn't stick to the table, it's kind of hard to get off. What you want to do is you just want to push it, fold it over, push it, fold it over, sometimes turn it around a little. Ugh, sticky, sticky. Ugh. Little. And you, you want to stop, you want to need it for about maybe 10 minutes and then you want to stop when it starts to get like, it starts to bounce back at you. Yeah. And if, if it gets too hard, a bit too hard, you can just ask the parent for help. Dad, can I go wash my hands? That reminds me, Dad uses a cheap plastic paint scraper to get the dough off the bench. Works pretty well. He's quite fast compared to me, so yeah. He's going so fast, he's like boom, boom, boom. Mm, it's actually about holding air to the dough. Trying to get bouncy back here. I'm not sure. This isn't sped up, by the way. Okay, I'm walking away, bye-bye. He's taking over the channel. So as you can see, it's nice and like 
smooth. Another thing, it's nice and like stretchy. Stick it in a nice clean bowl and then tuck it away for an hour and a half. So you want to cover it with something like a tea towel. Tuck it away, cover it, good night dough, have a good sleep. And then when it wakes up after an hour and a half, it should rise a lot and you poke holes into it. I love that part. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Siri, mate, you alive? Set timer for 90 minutes. Okay, the time is done. It's time to reveal. Remember, it was only like down, down here, a little, little small. So, voila. Oh, it's huge. Look at that. Huge. Now we can poke some holes into it. Oh, I love this part. It's like crusty on the top. Holes, 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 holes. Okay, now it's time to get this out again and knead it. But one thing we forgot to do was you're supposed to cover the bowl in flour first before you put it in. And we forgot about that. I'm gonna flour my hands and experiment. Well, it's not too bad. It's still pretty sticky, but oh yeah, this works. Eh. Getting good. Yeah, look at that. Wow, that is quite sticky. And this, yes, we did a. Uh, Okay, we did it. Bill. Now move that out of the way. Goodbye, bowl. Quick hello, flower. Oh, my hands. I better do a bit more kneading. I'm trying to do it like that. Just... Okay, now that my hair's back again, and a bit more flour on the bench, we're going to divide this and that's loud, it's like a drum. Anyway, we're gonna divide this in half and then divide those halves into halves. Like Get a good old trusty paint scraper. Oh, just so you know, this has never been used for paint. Nice and clean and stuff, so definitely do not use one that has been used for paint, because that will be very bad. I want to roll it out very gently. Rolls out very easily. Put a flower around. Now you actually do need to press down on it a little hard. Ugh. Gotta be quick with this. Okay, I just got this baking tray here and I'm going to be putting this thing on called Plenta. It's sort of like baking paper. You can just use baking paper if you want. Makes it taste yummy though and it looks pretty professional if I do say so myself. But anyway, you want to sprinkle lots on here. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then you want to place this on here. Also, it doesn't have to be like a perfect circle. It, like that's just kind of like a weird blob. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, that stretched a little, but there we go. So this is one of the balls of dough. We're only making one pizza a day today, so we're wrapping the other three up and putting them in the fridge. Make sure they're nice and loose, not too tight. Okay, now that they're in the fridge, it's time for the toppings, my favorite part. And so there are two main things you need. The rest is all your choice. It's cheese and the tomato base thing. You can use any cheese you want, but the best is really mozzarella. That's what we're using today. And we're also going to make my favorite pizza, Hawaiian is my favorite. Okay, so I just had some tomato sauce and now it's time for the tomato paste. So use the back of a spoon to move it all around. You don't go right up to the edges. You want the crust to like bubble up, puff up. Okay, so there isn't much pineapple because while the dough was rising, I kind of ate most of it. So, okay, I'm gonna add some mushrooms. I love mushrooms. And last but not least, the cheese. Okay, my pizza looks pretty done. So, it's time to cook it in the oven. Okay, I'm going to put my mittens on. And when it starts to smell like pizza, 
check on it. If the cheese is cooked, then it's ready to eat. And remember, clean as you go. So mum got that out with her oven gloves. Voila. Anyway, the pizza is ready. That took about maybe eight or nine minutes. And so I got this pizza cutter for my dad for Christmas. So I'm gonna let him do the honors to cut this pizza. Really helps. Cause it like, mmm, this smells delicious. I really wanna eat it now, but I can't because it's gonna to be too hot. So I'll be back in about two or three minutes. All right, who wants pizzas? Mom, Dad, come and get some. Mmm, this is so good. Oh my goodness. Mmm, it's cheap, pretty easy. Takes a bit of time, but it's definitely worth it. Much better than store-bought pizzas. Mm. And there's enough to make three more pizzas. Yay. Mm. 